Praise the Lord, everyone, as we welcome you once again to the Reaching Out program. I am the program's host, Elder Rudy Roussel. We encourage you today to get your Bibles while you can as we prepare to go to this program. We thank you once again for tuning in to this segment of the Reaching Out telecast. This program is telecast in its entirety from the Greater Emmanuel Apostolic Temple at 1150 West Galbraith Road. My pastors are the Honorable Bishop Paul Alexander Bowers, who is also the Diocesan Bishop in the State of Ohio and the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World. And our Executive Pastor is Elder LaVelton Daniel. We welcome you once again to Reaching Out program. We understand that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And with thoughts in mind, as we prepare to go before the Lord, again, I would encourage you to get your Bibles, to get your papers and pencils, so if you need to take notes, because we pray our prayer today that it is something in the word of the Lord to encourage your hearts that would help you to seek a further and greater relationship with Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Kind Father in heaven, we just thank you, Lord, for just allowing us another opportunity this day to come before your presence to say that we're thankful and we're most grateful, Lord, for all that you've done, but most importantly, Lord, for your presence in our life. We thank you for your death, burial, and resurrection, for the baptism of Jesus in, in his name. Thank you for being covered up under the blood of Jesus and for the Holy Ghost that leads us and guides us, Lord, in all righteousness and in all truth. Lord, we're truly grateful for you with things that you have done, even now, Lord, for what you're about to do. Our prayer this day, Lord, is that you put the hearts and the minds of the viewers of this telecast today. Lord, you know the nature of their needs. You know the special desires of their hearts. And we pray, Lord, that you bless them abundantly. Lord, remember those who are incarcerated, those who have fallen by the waste, those, Lord, who just be, need to be restored and develop the proper relationship with you. We pray today, Lord, that the word, as it goes forth, Lord, it pricks heart. That it bind up those that are brokenhearted, set those who are captives free. Give those, Lord, who are suffering. Father in heaven, we pray that it gives them joy unspeakable and full of glory to those who are saddened and downtrodden. Father in heaven, we pray as well, Lord, that you remember all of the souls who are seeking the presence and the power in their lives. Those who have been baptized in your name, Lord, but still need to be filled with the precious gift of your presence and power in their lives here at Greater Emmanuel. Remember, Lord, our church family and all of the saints of God as we encourage your heart to continue to seek God. Father, we thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today, I would ask you, now that you've had your Bibles handy and got in your pencils and you are ready to make your little notes, that you would turn with us again to the third chapter of St. John. During our last telecast, we touched upon some things, uh, but certainly there is always something in the word of the Lord that we would encourage you to seek today. So we thought, we thought that, uh, given the opportunity, that we would revisit the third chapter of St. John. Please turn with us uh, as we prepare to read verses 1 through 5. And it reads, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And the Bible says that the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? How can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And just for the sake of reading, we'll read verse 6 as well. It said, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Nicodemus, well, the Bible says that he was a Pharisee, uh, a ruler of the Jews. He was a learned man, educated in the things of Jewry. He was a learned man in his community, the Sadducees and the scribes. He was a very learned man. 
when it came to the things of the manuscripts of old and, and scripture. He was a very, he approached Jesus. The Bible says he approached the Lord by night. Now, it does not say why he waited until night, the cover of darkness, in order to do, to approach God. But of course, in this life and in this world and, and in the cares and concerns, we do a lot of things ungodly at the cover of night. We, 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 we patronize establishments that we shouldn't. We go places and do things that we shouldn't do at the cover of darkness, in the cover of night. We do things because sometimes we prefer to do things at night when we're not saved because we realize that they can be hidden from, from people that might want to see you. You know, that you can do things under the cover of darkness. But we know that Jesus himself is the light of the world. The light is present. There is no darkness. So Jesus, Nicodemus is coming to him at night and he's talking about God's plan of salvation and he said he recognizes that thou art a teacher that comes from God see when you things of God and the presence and the power of God abides in you folks take notice as to who you are and who you represent he said we know that thou art a man uh, 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 come from God he said for no man can do uh, these miracles uh, that thou doest except he come from God and a lot of the things that we do in the body of Christ are solely because the Lord is presence in our life. You can look at an individual and you can tell whether he's walking up right before the Lord. The Bible says you know the tree by the fruit it bears. So certainly if the tree is fruitful, then it's going to bear fruitful trees, those things that are righteous and honest and right in the presence or in the eyes of the Lord. Uh, these things uh, 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 that we know that cannot be done under the cover of darkness because the light in, is taking place in our life and the light shine in us. It tells us that Nicodemus was saying to him, he said, uh, 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 he said that God be with him. He said, except that God be with him. And a whole lot of things that we do in the body of Christ is solely because the presence and the power of God rest in us. And Nicodemus certainly recognized these things in Christ Jesus. He, first he said that because you, uh, uh, thou art a teacher come from God and that the miracles that thou doest except God, that it can be done except God be with him. So we understand that Nicodemus had that much of a foresight to see and to understand that there was something different about this Jesus. There was something peculiar about this man because the things and the lifestyle that he was different from those that, uh, that other folks at that time were, were, were living. And certainly it applies to us today here in the body of Christ. Our lifestyle is representative of the fact that we walk in holiness. The Bible, holiness without which no man shall see God. We are partakers of the Pentecostal experience as the Holy Ghost fell on the church in the New Testament church in the book of Acts. We are partakers of that divine experience. Self said, go and wait till you be endued with power. And the power we're talking about is the presence and the power of the Holy Ghost as it, as it abides in us. Jesus is telling Nicodemus of God's plan of salvation. He says that, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Some folks are telling you, and we addressed this in our last message, that, you know, it doesn't take all of that of the requirements that other groups have, or, or certain groups say you need to do. All of those things are not required of you to do in the body of Christ. That you trust God. That you need to believe God. That you accept God. That you call upon the name of the Lord and you're saved. Well, it takes that, certainly because the scriptures say that, but it takes a whole lot more. And Jesus is telling him, he said, except a man be born again, he shall not see the kingdom of God. You cannot see the kingdom of God without the new birth process or without the new birth plan of salvation in your life you will not see the kingdom of God. God had the whole thing worked out his whole plan of salvation worked out now he didn't have an A plan and a B plan and a backup plan he doesn't need all of that because he's God and he devised a way for eternal salvation 
for the people of God. If you eternally live right, then you can expect to go on into eternity with God. But your lifestyle must be based solely upon holiness, upon righteousness, and doing things in this current life as thus said the Lord in the word of God. The word of God is our guideline. It is our recipe for salvation. It is the thing that draws us closer to God himself through the word of God and prayer. These are the keys that help us to get where we need to be in heavenly place. In the presence and the power of the Holy Ghost as it dwells in us is the thing that enlightens us. It will lead you. It will guide you in all righteousness and in all truth. All of these things are essential in God's plan of salvation. They are essential in the New Testament, new birth process. Because you have to live the truth. You have to learn the truth. You have to walk the truth. You have to talk the truth. There is nothing about God's plan of salvation that you can give to God. You can't give anything to God. See, because God gave us this plan of salvation so his grace, by his mercy, and by his love and kindness. That is the reason we'll say because God loved us. The scripture says, as we said earlier, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever but in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He that believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And of course, we have people that do not believe in God, believe in the new birth process. They don't believe that Jesus and God are one and the same. They don't believe that when you get to heaven, you're going to see him as he is. They do not believe that you must be born of both water and of the spirit. They do not believe that you have to be covered up under the blood. They don't believe that you have to be born again, baptized into his name, and filled with the presence and the power of God in your life. You have to speak with other tongues as the spirit of God give the utterance. They do not believe that. And one day, after the final consummation of all things, after the final consummation of all scripture and all prophecy is fulfilled, this belief that these things we believe will become a reality for those that do not. But it's going to be too late. See, I, can't, I cannot wait that long to find out if my lifestyle is not lined with the word of God. I cannot wait that long to find out, oh, well, maybe next week I'll make it to church. Or maybe when I get a new suit, I'll, I'll make it to church. Or maybe when I get a haircut, I will make it to church. When I get my tooth fixed, I will make it to church. I can't wait that long. All you have to do is look out and see what's going on around you outside. We got folks killing folks. We got same-sex marriages on the rise. We've got folks that are, 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 are initiating uh, 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 these marital situations where folks should not be married, same-sex genders marrying each other. Homosexuality is on the rise. Sexually transmitted diseases are on the rise. Unwedded, out-of-wedlock children are being born. Divorce is on the rise. We've allowed folks to take the Ten Commandments out of the church. You can't pray in the classroom. It's illegal to do a whole lot of things now because those that do not believe think that we are violating their civil rights in them to pray. Not so. We're not asking folks to pray. We're not violating their civil rights. What we're saying is don't violate our right to pray. Don't violate our right to live in accordance with God's word. Don't violate our right to worship and serve the Lord in the beauty of holy, holiness. Don't violate our right. See, because the scriptures already encourages us and tell us, those that believe, what great things God has in store for us. And because we are saturated with the presence and the power of God, and because we are born again into the newness of our 
old man, our old sins, our old deeds are washed away. And the Lord himself said, I will wash them whiter than snow. He said, I will throw them in a sea of forgetfulness and I will remember those things anymore. I will not remember. That's what the Lord said. And those of us that believe that do not question, we do not question God's plan of salvation because we understand that God is the one that saved us. Because we understand that the lifestyle, the aptitude, the changes that we made in our life were initiated by God. We understand those things. We don't question them. We accept them. And God shows us in his word who he is. And we understand that because we know that the, 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 the presence and the power of God, when it abides and dwells in us, and we speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance, the initial sign of the presence and the power of God as it abides in us. Somebody ought to say amen somewhere. Some believer right now ought to be feeling chills run down their spine when you talk about the presence and the power as it dwells in us. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And God himself had to pluck us out of this world and will add it to his perfect and to his marvelous life because we believe, because we trust God and that there was something greater that the world had to offer, and it had to be Jesus. It had to be Jesus. Jesus didn't come to destroy life. He didn't come to destroy. Oh, it's too hard to live saved. Why is it too hard to live saved when in you doing the work for you? He died for you. A man is a fool to die in his sins when Jesus has already done it for you. He's already died for you. He sent the Holy Ghost to keep you. Give you a place to worship and to serve him. How hard can that be? He said, I'll supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory. I'll give you what you need to sustain your place in this life until my triumphant return, until I come back. I'll leave the Holy Ghost in place to guide you in all righteousness and in all truth. I'll leave the word of God so you'll always be able to commune with me. I'll teach you how to find me. I'll teach you how to seek me in the scriptures. I'll teach you how to pray so you can get a prayer off the runway. I'll teach you these things so we can develop a relationship so I can be your father and you can be my child. But you got to be a believer. You got to be born again. Folks are telling you, oh, it doesn't take all that. Let me tell you something. All of God, I would rather do too much to get to heaven than to get there and the white throne judgment and find out I didn't do enough to stay in the presence of God. So whatever it takes for me to do to get there, I'm going to make it. My children don't make it. I'm going to make it. My wife and family don't make it. I'm going to make it with the help of the Lord. We pray for our children. So many deterrents outside the confines of the, has blinded the eyes of our children. And now they've become the children of disobedience because they no longer, or they refuse to believe that Christ is king, that Jesus is Lord above all, that he's our soon coming, that he's our savior, that he's our redeemer, that he's our deliverer. He said himself, he says, I'm the way, the truth, and the light. He said, no man coming to the Father except by me. They're refusing to latch onto this principle. And, and, and it's because of these things, we're running among societies just head over heel in sin. And we're just making wrong things right. Living by it, knowing that these things should not be. But those who leave, we're embracing Christianity. We're embracing the word of God. We're not turning away from it, but we're reaching out, trying to grasp more of it and holding on to it. Holding on to it soon coming king just grasp principles and the, and the statutes and ordinances and the word of god sustaining and developing a relationship that no man can break because we love jesus and because we believe him in our heart to be our savior solely because it's in the power of god dwells within us. look at it those that god has plucked out of the muck and of the mire pulled out of the guttermost and into the uttermost that those of us that God had cleaned up he gave him a new walk he gave him a new oh God he has done miraculous things in the lives of his people and their lifestyle is reflected of it they don't do the things that they used to do anymore now we are light we are living epistles to those who are lost in dark people we walk up to folks and in, in different areas and communities uh, uh, in, in our society. 
and we're not ashamed to talk about the gospel of Jesus Christ, to witness the goodness and the pleasantness and the power in our life. It's pleasant when you want to talk about Jesus. Things just, just seem to happen when you start talking about the name of Jesus. And things just seem like the peace and the calm overtakes you when you talk about Jesus. No matter what you might be going through in your life, when you start talking about Jesus, it's just got to get better. It gets better and it gets better and it gets better because we realize it's not so much about us. It's about Jesus. When we realize the whole thing, the whole plan, when we realize God's entire plan of salvation, it is not about us because we were created for his glory. It's not about us because he delighted himself in us. All we are supposed to do is just worship and to serve him. And I'll do everything else. I'll supply your needs according to my riches and glory. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll always be here. I'll be with you till the end of God's promise. He would not leave us. He said he would not withhold no good thing from them that love him. And I love the Lord today because he first loved me. Those of us that, those of us that love and trust God, we understand and embrace born again, new birth process. We understand New Testament salvation. And I will preach it until the day that I die. You gotta be born of the water of the Spirit. And Jesus himself told Nicodemus, without this, he said, verily, verily, I say unto thee, unless you're born of the water and of the Spirit, you'll not enter the kingdom. And he says again, I, you'll not even see it. You gotta have it. You wanna enter it and see the kingdom of God. You got to be born again. The difference between heaven and hell is its splendor and the complete opposite in hell on the other end of the spectrum. All of the things that you might envision in your mind, then some about the greatness and the goodness of God. All of the things that offer those that love him, that those that spend their lifetime worshiping and serving him in the beauty of holiness. All of the splendor and gloriousness about worshiping and serving the eternal God. This end of the spectrum, hell is the complete opposite. I don't know. There may be somebody in our viewing audience today who does not know the Lord and the pardoning and the forgiveness of their sins. There is an eternity for you. Where will you spend eternity today? Where will you spend eternity? Will you be with the Lord? Will you go from time into everlasting? They all scriptures fulfilled our Lord and Savior returns and, and come back to get all those that love him. Where will you spend eternity? Is, will it be in the presence of God? The Bible says, Jesus talked to Nicodemus. You must be. You got to be. You should be. You need to be born again. He said, verily, verily, I say it unto thee. You must be born again. And the new birth process is a thing right here for you today. All you have to do is get down on your knees with a sincere and a repentant heart and ask God to just forgive you for the things that you've done. Ask God to help you to overcome all of that the world has attracting you, the drawing you, that's keeping you from coming into the body of Christ. Ask God to break those ties and to sever those bonds that hold you and restrain you from coming into the kingdom of God because you need the presence and the power of the life to break those shackles and to loose those bonds. And God is there for you. He said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. I'm here for you. All you have to do is call on the name of the Lord. Do what thus said God in his word. He said you got to be born of the water and of the spirit. And Peter, when he preached the first sermon in the New Testament church, he gets up in the book of Acts in the second chapter. He said, repent every last one of you for the remission of your sins. He said you should be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. New Testament salvation. That is the first sermon preached in the New Testament church. 
repentance, baptism in the name of the Lord, in the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. This is the same thing that Jesus is telling Nicodemus about here in John chapter number 3. He said, you got again. And Peter, the one the Lord had given him the keys to the kingdom, he's telling him, this is what it's going to take. you got to be born again. My dear friend, let another minute pass by. I would run someplace trying to find Jesus. I will run to a church that's preaching and teaching the gospel. I will run scratching on the doors of the church trying to get in asking God to help me to open and to loose the shackles and the bonds that the world has on my life. Those of you that fallen by the wayside, get up, dust yourself off, get back into the presence of God before it's too late. And there's going to come a time spirit will not always strive with man. He said, it will not, but seek the Lord while he may be found, and you can find him here today. If you're in the city of Cincinnati, please visit us at the Greater Emmanuel Dalek Temple at 1150 West Galbraith Road, right here in the city of Cincinnati. Our telephone number is 513-522-1150. Come and hear the word of God preached. Come and see the presence and the power of God in action. Come see dynamic and anointing preaching. Come and see how the word of God prick hearts and change lives and prepares us to be useful citizens in the body of Christ for the forthcoming kingdom of God. God bless you and may God keep you. In Jesus' name.